Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. weather reports. We love seeing it. Chilly in Florida. I did not expect that. <laughs> That'll frost your oranges, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> and we got a blustery Philly. Yeah, yeah it sounds like the uh, a good hunk of the eastern seaboard seems to have gotten in the U.S. and we've gotten a big dump of snow. We missed it. <laughs> uh, we only get to gloat once in a while from here in the north. Yeah, well, you know, the great white north, as they say, mm. um, you know, speaking of uh, reflecting on green room chats. Woo, well, it's Wednesday. It's idiotic day. And uh, good to see everybody in the chat. We have a uh, fantastic show lined up today. Chris, who's hanging out with us? Folks, we have Jim Pachaki with us again. Um, Jim, there might be some folks who didn't make it to our last session with you. So give us your, your, your thumbnail bio, introduce yourself, tell us your secret hero backstory. Oh, uh oh, you're muted. You're muted, Jim. <laughs> or we lost your audio somehow. Oh, now it is muted. You know, we were all talking in the green room, just so everybody in the chat knows. It, it, we, we, it was <laughs> absolutely working, I swear. Yep. <laughs> it, it's like, well, you know, it's... you're nothing yet, Jim. Sorry. No, no. It's, it's like when you have a technical problem with a tool and then the support people look at you, look at it, and then it doesn't happen, right? Uh, or it's the, sort of the inverse of that. Um, yeah, let me let me take know. the video off the stage and maybe that automatically muted him or something. I don't know. See what happens there. Nope, still can't hear him. Mm. Uh -huh. Well, we do know that it's gray in the UK. Uh, that's that's from Joe. Uh, um, that seems surprising that it's gray in the UK. <laughs> Strange, know. unexpected, yeah, unexpected weather. I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, Joseph in the chat is off suggesting that maybe there was a mute button on the headphones that might have been clicked, but, but Jim, you were using a separate mic, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then yeah, maybe hit the Yeti or something. How about this? Um, why don't you try doing a refresh on your browser? Um, and uh, Chris and I will will tease the show and uh, give everybody a little bit of a, while, okay, while you sorry. get logged back sorry. in. There you go. Oh, yeah, you're back. There you you're are. Back. You're back. Perfect. Oh, now he's frozen. Yeah. Well, he's doing the refresh probably. Oh, okay. We'll get it started. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Hey, everybody. So we're going to be talking today about um, new Hollywood methods of uh, storytelling and supercharging your training and um, something in particular that was very new to me called the Sabido method. And I must admit, um, mm. it sounded more like a medical procedure than <laughs> a, uh, Hollywood storytelling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does have that kind of a, <laughs> of a ring to it. Yes. But, uh, yes, I was quite intrigued when he was uh, explaining it to me. And so I, uh, I said, you must come back on and explain how this can be applied to, uh, to e-learning and um, well, to developing stories for any type of learning, really, whether you're going to mm -hmm. be building that e-learning or classroom based, or as we talked about a couple weeks ago, blended. 
Which is yeah, and so much of what we do, um, you know, in, in putting together e-learning training instructor, anything like that, we, we get focused on the content, um, you know, the facts, just the facts, ma'am, uh, et cetera. So being able to frame things up in ways that can, can increase engagement, trigger some of those emotional buttons too, to make people connect to that content better, which is, you know, what storytelling is all about. Um, and framing exactly. those things. Oh, light bulb Joe is mentioning how good were the Oscars this year? Great. Brendan Fraser, et cetera. Yeah. We had a, a we had a nice Canadian showing, uh, Brendan Fraser being of course, Canadian, uh, of Canadian roots. Um, nice. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Cornell is, did he just dragnet me? Yeah. That was kind of a, it was a fumbly dragnet reference. Uh, Sergeant Joe Friday. Yeah. Um, also, Sarah Polly won an Oscar for um, screenplay, one of the screenplay categories hmm. for her film, Women Talking. Do um, Am I the only one left that has not seen everything everywhere all at once? Uh, not going to lie. I loved it. Uh, it was just it was just a joyous experience. Just so I, I heard it was such a combination. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's a hoot. And it's touching as well, um, and um, but just a, a blast to, of a film. Yeah, I still got to see it. It was a hoot. So, Craig, Polly is one of your in one of your favorite movies. Um, um, which one is that? I'm only asking because I'm I'm betting we're thinking of the same one, uh, Baron Munchausen. Um, yeah, Sarah Polly was a child actor. Uh, uh, and, and she's the the character, the kid character in, in uh, the Adventures of Baron Munchausen from Terry Gilliam, I think one of the ex Monty Python folks. Yeah, Craig's confirming for Baron Munchausen. So she, um, after you know that childhood career, ended up um, she's a she's a, a director and a, has done a couple of really phenomenal films. Okay, how's that? Cool. Oh, we here, Jim. Now we just need to see you. Okay, very yeah. good. It'll Very probably good. be showing up in a minute. It could be a bandwidth thing or something. A, I, I, it's just switched in a different packet, so it'll come by after the audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, so, Jim, probably. since we have your audio, let's let's uh, start just with your, you know, introduce yourself now. Now that we've sure. got you back and we're ready to roll on that front. Sure. I'm an ATD licensed instructional designer, part of a new breed that comes from uh, broadcast uh, background. I think you had one on last week, Mark. Lasson, is that his name? or um, Lassoff. Lassoff. He's also, he and I are good friends, and he's also from a, a, a broadcast background, as is uh, one of our idiodeces people, uh, so uh, Brent. So we, um, we were really picky about certain things. And um, in graduate school, I was blessed to, to study with the guy we're talking about today, Miguel Sabido. He was three, one of my three mentors in school that led to my career in learning a pivot from my first career, which is, is in children's animation, working on He-Man and the Masters of the Universe as a staff writer. So I was headed for that direction. I, I pivoted. I, I decided things happened in my life, and I decided that I liked learning better. Actually, one of the few people that didn't fall into it. The other two mentors were Ev Rogers, who wrote a book called The Diffusion of Innovation, he was behind all those terms like innovators and all that stuff. And then wow. Bob Cialdini, who we talked about yep. last time, who was a uh, it was this nexus of people that happened to be at you know Edinburgh School Pen at the time. So it just really it just clicked, and I'm one of the discarded results. So <laughs> well, amazing level of synchronicity for you there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to be talking about the Sabido method. And am I saying it right? For some reason, I always kind of want to say Sabido, too. So Yeah, it looks that like that, but it's you pronounce it like Pareto principle, Sabido, Pareto. Ah, okay. Banana. Good way to remember. Good, good, good way to remember. Yeah, my biggest interest in uh, in hearing more about it was okay. How do you take something that has been thought of and and created for, uh, you know, maybe film or or storytelling in a in a in one sense, but then take that process or that method and apply it into the work we do? Because obviously, not everybody in corporate training has, uh, you know, unlimited budgets or, 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 or big budgets even, and, uh, you know, hard to spend six to 12 months 
you know, doing all of the steps of a Hollywood production and, and that kind of storytelling and that kind of effect and all that kind of stuff. So how can we, oh. how can we, how can we apply it to the work that everybody does? You're asking how can we overcome what Hollywood considers strengths, what, what learning might consider a limitation of budget, time, uh, intellect <laughs> among clients, who knows? But um, I, I think those are actually uh, uh, part of what I'm going to talk about, the main thing I'm going to talk about, but I think the first thing to do is to forget that you're making a learning piece, okay? Sabido says, these kind of books, uh, Mager, um, intellectual books, teacher's books about that, they have no place in the Sabido method because, same as uh, objectives, and we'll talk about those too, they lead you down a path of what I consider to be very dry pieces. I was just taking one for my new uh, uh, tech client, um, and it was a, a piece on security. And from the very beginning, it was a text on the screen filled with bullets. Nothing was even changing. And I apply what I call the 30-second rule and the three-second rule, which we talked about last time, generates some interest. No slide, because working in a slide medium, you know, no slide longer than 30 minutes, and no nothing. Every something must change every three seconds. A bullet, God forbid, or a whatever you're doing, you know, you have to. You're limited somewhat by clients. But what you what you have to do is put the put the idea of this is a learning piece aside. Sabido recommends that we start with other texts. Like, well, the only learning piece I value is the one I brought out last time, which is called PowerPoint Doesn't Suck, You Do. <laughs> and it means, <laughs> sorry, I'm not supposed to say PowerPoint, by the way. But no, um, it's good. <laughs> what it is, is uh, uh, David McGimsey, he's head of uh, of the uh, Berlitz School in uh, Tokyo and rapidly moving up to be running the corporation. He is a, uh, hey, there I am. He is a, um, a creature of, uh, of dissonance he's a disruptive kind of professor and what he teaches is is in all in that book i'm not we don't have time to go into it again but basically what it is is talk it through instead of starting to write powerpoints for yourself my go-to source is powerpoint i or whatever you do use to start with you could also start with camtasia or captivate or uh, storyline but whatever you start in uh, as well, well as domino one will as well as domino we'll, one yeah we'll which point is, that out <laughs> Absolutely, I think it's a great Sponsors thing, tool. Up. I've been I, I of today's know. session. They they're uh, they've got something there. Like, I've been playing with it, and um, so um, uh, no bullets, no no outline, no design document. Just well, you're given a design document to work with, but put that aside for a second, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Develop a piece from thought balloons, and then start building it out as you talk it through and he has his chapters give exercise and activities on exactly how to do that at the beginning you think this guy's a nut but he has all kinds of uh, vignettes uh, anecdotes in there that really justify what he's doing so that's the only textbook i use i i i took it past the bigger class and get the atd cert and all that kind of stuff but i did that mainly to have that in my resume not because i saw any value in it um and i'm sorry to all, I mean, Bob McGuire has passed along. And I didn't mean anything from his, for his, in his memory, but I don't, I don't have any time for that. Um, unless, of course, someone calls and says, here's XXX per hour, <laughs> and we need you to do this by tomorrow. Of course, I'm not going to turn down a client. And there's times when, yes, things are too tight, and you just can't do that. But for the most time, I've never had anyone deliver any objection or, or stick to any objection that, and, and we never went over budget or over time. I'm stickler about that. I'm hmm. finishing my PMP this year for that reason. I want to find out what they do, the project managers or in the government world, the program managers and program directors. So um, I think the main thing is just to kind of keep in mind that you're on a tighter budget. Uh, we shoot in LA because the best actors, well, the only good actors are there. Sorry if you have an acting career. And Canada, actually. There's some really good... <laughs> Vancouver, BC is coming up, and Toronto, too. Toronto is coming up uh, with some great theater actors that you can kind of 
sewered into film, you know, <laughs> and probably more because it's been 20 years since I lived in Detroit and, and used Canadian actors. But only, I mean, I think there's three cities in the country that have good good talent. Uh, and don't talk like this or or say yo or you know they they're just Cleveland accented, ready to go off the show if you don't have to work with them. And there's like free all the way up to thousands of dollars per day. So you you got a, a wide choice in L.A. and that's where we to our stages are where we which I shoot out of. So yeah, it is a concern, but I'm going to show you some ways to kind of trim that back a little bit. And let's and do it. it. Yeah. So um, if I'll go to uh, kind of the first. Let's uh, go to the whiteboard. Go to, go to the whiteboard, and I do the thing here with the uh, full screen. No, I got, I got you. Oh, I, you, got got you. you I got you. I got you. Yep. Yep. You're you're you're, you're good to go. Screen now. You're good. I don't see a oh, wide screen yet. Oh, if you wanted to go, yeah, if you want it widescreen on your monitor, yeah, you do have to click oh, the, bot, yes, the button. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I and um, Sorry. this is all this is all here courtesy of help from my my poor wife because I I blew up my knee yesterday at uh, Trader Joe's, and I'm on crutches, and so I literally came here to get. I set up yesterday because I love more time. I came here and I I crashed into the board and smashed everything down. Put tea everywhere. I'm luckily still have a keyboard, you know, and. Uh, so thanks to her, to Pauline for for this. But we're gonna took okay, it. This is Miguel Sabido, the smiling guy. He um, he's a. Uh, I'll tell you his story. He uh, is not from big budgets. Okay, he's from, and that's why they like him because there's a lot of cheap producers in L.A. Um, those are the ones going to Chicago and Atlanta and working, you know, because it's to save money. You know? So um, the uh, and then and then then in those cities in the U.S., uh, communities are growing up as well so uh, we don't have to worry about that as much as instructional designers which is just an aside anyway um he was a, he's a professor he's a social scientist he's published el tono which is his book the tone the theory of the tone which encompasses all his life's work so it isn't anything about tone but, but it's got the subito method in there and that's what i adapted and while working at uh, in the defense industry at raytheon so um what he did is he uh, was he appointed head of Televisa in Mexico, and that they produce all the telenovelas, the, the soap operas. But because the government's involved, there are social objectives for all of these. So Sabido said, why not? Let's go all the way and make serious social change. So he invented uh, Simplementi Maria, Simple Maria, who shows women how to stand up to their husbands in the machismo culture of the day, who, for, who uses birth control, which is forbidden by the Catholic Church, and, and and the government hates the Catholic Church. They don't let them wear their their clerical garb on the street, even. But so that's why they wanted that. And then um, eventually um, migrated over to Uganda after he was declared a national hero of Mexico. Oh, and by the way, population growth reduced forty seven percent under that demonstrate with a level four assessment of what they call level four assessment of his his effect. So he changes behavior with drama. I love to write drama. I was in all the student plays. I made student films since I was seven. I won the Kodak contest when I was 12, prematurely. And I I just like filmmaking. So this was a natural for me for learning to, 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 to be able to do that. It just occurred to me one day I could use that. So um, then he went to Africa and reduced AIDS incidents in Uganda by a staggering like 80%. The truck drivers in Uganda were stopping at the truck stops and having unprotected sex with the prost local prostitutes. So Sabido did a uh, Ugandan drama, dramatizing that situation, you know, and what they go through, who has a kid, who has illegitimate children, all that kind of stuff. And people saw what was going on and the AIDS incidents dropped to 80 per by 80% under him. Hmm. Well, let's, so let's figure crazy. out how we can go through and, and do that. How, how, does, well, how does that uh, method work? Okay, sorry. Let's let's cut to your initial question. Um, and I have a basically a chart that kind of shows some of the differences. One of the things you have to do is is get rid of the Addy model. Okay, everybody. Goes okay, that's by, easy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's so hard that we couldn't get rid of it. We had to call it something else. Even our our agile Addy model, which I I actually found from a professor Borgwing, who is a, a Swede who works for the VA. He has a whole PhD about it. He's, he admits there's no way to get rid of Addy. It's it's there for good. It's with us forever. Okay, but so let's call it something like Addy, but do something completely different. So 
So that's what sure. Agile Addy is. Okay. And basically, what you can see here is um, the 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 um, framework differences is that you save almost a hundred days on your development. And I'll, I'll I'll send some Agile some Addy documents that will go into the process. But this basically summarizes everything. Your needs assessment occupies and front end analysis occupies a lot of space, and then your design document comes out of that. And your training support coverage comes out of that in the need in the Addy model. Here in the um, instead of spending sixty or seventy days on needs assessment and analysis, you spend ninety days and another sixty days, four days more on your instructional design document. So it's all about what you do upfront, what you, thinking you do that goes into the document that makes it uh, better. So that's that's kind of the fundamental underpinning. We, we're also working on a VR Addy because we're going to divide and conquer further as we get into immersive media. And I'd like to talk about a VR in one of the future sessions about VR and learning, if, if that's, if that's you know, I'm welcome back. Um, and now the training support package, this is the biggest difference. Posters, job aids, activity guides, those are supremely important, but they are just afterthoughts in most um practitioners of the Eddy model. Okay, so we put posters all over the place. They're not expensive to make. We got deals with the poster companies with Mr. Print and other places around. And sometimes companies have internal print shops. Those show that the company is serious about the learning. And, and that, I, I must say that's an important part of why our injury reduction for DLA, Defense Logistics Agency, like, like Amazon warehouses for the government to kill people. It's like the same thing. Those are those went down uh, seventy two percent in the first year of one thirty minute immersion, and they continued on to uh, three years with no additional. Just we changed the posters up a little bit, you know, and that and that we kept it alive by, be, by going on the cheap. So and then we have a quote here from somebody at the bottom that I'll, I'll I have this as a document. I'll I'll deliver it. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure all of the things that get shared today end up on the the blog post for today, and uh, and and have a list of of all the great assets and and connect anything that Jim sends along. So, um, so let's get to your question. Um, all right, we go. Thank you. <laughs> He's our he calls us our spirit god. He's actually a really <laughs> really cool guy. Incredibly cool. Um, okay, so. There are three characters. Oh, okay, so we're getting rid of Addy books, getting rid of school teacher books. Okay, we, we, you've got to do those in order to conform to the Addy model that your clients all put from their HR department on your job description when you're bidding on a job or hiring you. But what Sabino recommends is you get inspiration from other kinds of books. These are books from ancient mythology, like the Bhagavad Gita, in the, in the Hindu holy book. Which has, which is a great story. It's like the Odyssey. It's really cool. Really hard to read, but it's cool. Uh, Caesar's Macbeth, which contains a premise that can be applied to any industrial situation. Ruthless ambition in, in the leadership field. Ruthless ambition leads to its own destruction. Right, Lady Macbeth. Mm -hmm. So this will give you inspiration for how to pull that off. Um, just a couple more uh, great works of science fiction, like The Invisible Man, and then. Um, the Aeneid by Ver Publius Virgilius, and then, or that's Publius Ovid, sorry, that's the wrong one. And then, you know, other books like Vanity Fair, uh, Joseph Conrad. Now, how do those fit in? Well, you're not going to do a learning piece. We're doing training by anecdote and example. So what are those dismissed uh, typically as vignettes? What else do they call them? I forget the words. The, 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 Scenarios, uh, you Scenarios, know, common yeah. term, yeah. <clears throat> Horrible term for what, for, for, for learning. It's like, this is a scenario. Take one egg here and put it in here. That's your first objective. And it, no, all that goes. So Addy, gone. Okay, that's what, this is how I do it, all right? Um, it's there, but only in name because you can't get rid of Addy. It's, 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 it's never going away. It's like, it's like uh, those bad car commercials that would never go away, you know, in the eighties. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and there's some Addy person going, no, 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 no. Um, local commercials, <laughs> right? You know. Um, and then the other thing are objectives need to be pulled out. Um, suppose you were watching, um, what's a popular Netflix show right now? Uh, Blackish. It's found its way to Netflix or 
some Netflix original show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the camera pans over, and Rod Sterling is standing there saying, "In this show, we're going to learn three things." <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't connect with a narrative mode that you're in. It violates a narrative mode that belongs elsewhere in the training process. I just don't happen to participate in that. So objectives are in the design document, and we recommend, of course, in the in the model I showed you that those be very carefully thought through, but guaranteed um, when you ask three simple questions, that will cut to the chase right away. The question I asked every meeting is when it, when it finally, the lens finally pans to me and they go, oh, you're the instructional designer. I said, well, I said, well, okay, so why are we here? What are we trying to, what is success? What does it look like? What are we trying to achieve? They would ask them what it looks like, what it sounds like. And then how it will be measured. Okay, guaranteed. Those three questions rarely come up altogether. That's why I decided to start asking them. And it's funny that people start talking, and and you'll get the person in the, what I call the guy in the garage. That's why I go to conferences and conventions is to find the real true practitioners who have something special to add. Well, the guy in the garage in the, in the corporate garage will speak up, or the woman in the corporate garage will speak up and say, "You know what? Really, the problem is, I saw this post-it note." And this really made everything make sense to me. And those are the things, that's when my, my antennas, my Spock ears go up, you know, because I that's when you really have to do that. But those three questions, why are we here? What are we, you know, what does success look like and sound like? And how will it be measured? That has everything in it. You don't need all the textbooks. However, you need all the textbooks to get your sexual design degree and all that stuff too. And, that, and that's good too. I mean, it's good to be thinking about learning. Okay, but I I tend to put the thinking aside. Not a good, I'm not a good talker. I'm a good or thinker. I'm a doer. You know, I like I'm an, I'm an action person. So my family goes back 900 years to fighting the Vikings. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. And that's how you do it. Is those three those three questions? We'll so we get those three questions. Then what happens? What do we do next? Okay, my screen went back to triptych. Uh, oh, now we're oh, so now we're going to the whiteboard. All right, here we go. What? I'm yeah. putting you back. All right. Yeah, now we go to the evil whiteboard. <laughs> the the white fairy of the north will come. So um, there are three characters in most Tobito interactions. It's it's like a, like a play. You know, he's he's directed plays before he got into that. So there's a there's an infinite number of characters you could draw from, and the archetypes that come from. And it's in El Tono, his book, but it's only sorry guys, it's only in Spanish. I'm working on a translation in Espanol, but it takes. It, it's hard, you know, when you're, half your family speaks Cantonese, they don't speak Spanish. So I have to, um, but I'm, I'm going to come out with a, a version of El Tono that will make this happen. In the meantime, we got job aids and stuff for, for that. But the, the one character that, that characterizes and the most important thing to remember is in a scenario vignette, in a drama, it's about decision. So you have a character on the fence about something. In this case, uh, we represented it as a safety training this actually is an is is not a real person this is a an ai generated by our our uh, cto jim lagoy who works with chat gtp and um so this is a, a representation of a character on the fence making a decision see the confused look in his face and stuff you just type that in and it comes out as a character and then it learns so we'll put him in the middle and that's our most important audience because people relate to people who are trying to decide things that's what 2,000 years of drama tells us. So that's the first one. Okay. And then influencing, can you guess what are the two? Ca- oh. Can you guess what are the two characters that, that accompany this guy? Just take a, I'll send it, I'll tell it to our, ask it to our, our experts. If you, can can right. you imagine who's going to influence this character on a job setting in a dangerous planet? I'm going to bet people who are then on either side of the fence. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. And what might two of those be? Well, I'll um, you okay. Yeah. So uh, probably someone who doesn't, uh, someone who's been affected and, and has direct experience with consequences, and then someone who maybe dismisses those consequences or, or something. Okay. Well, you're right. And this is part two. Okay. Part one, uh, the first answer is close, but I'll refine it a little bit. Okay. Um, it is a person who is an advocate for the value that you want oh, to okay. propose. Craig, Craig this... says the guide, but he says the inspector. 
Yes. Uh, Lance Lance says the the devil and angel on each shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly that's all those are are, are mm-hmm. in your answer too, Chris. They're spot on. So we have another. Our next uh, uh, AI is a guy. By the way, Chat GTP is no longer. It's changed. It spent seven figures to buy AI.com. So you'll be seeing the seeing the PR come out. But I've got a buddy at, at uh, GoDaddy. But anyway, this is from ChatGTP. It's basically a guy who's doing something wrong. He's got his legs going to be slashed off under by the cart or whatever, and he's he's over the fence, the guidepost that he's not supposed to go beyond. You're supposed to get permission to do that. So one of the most serious injuries in our clients uh, are uh, con- confined spaces, because when you go in and you go down, the natural instinct is contrary to what the true policy should be and, and is, is articulated clearly and taught to them. Uh, you got to wait. You got to get until so somebody else comes to back you up and lower you in with a rope because up to four people will die jumping in to help their buddy at a tank that they've used the wrong solvent on and now, it's, and, and now they're, they're passed out. So you got like three people jumping in after the first guy who dies. So if they had done the right procedure and taught the right way, Boom. So, the, but this is a, just a more of a general, a generic sense. Right. So he's on one side, and then uh, influencing the other is the character that we just mentioned, the old hand who's gone through it. This guy's lost an arm in a safety accident. He's now the safety inspector, and he has his heart is totally in it. He's one of those untouchable um, Sam Elliott type characters. You know, uh, Samuel is an American actor who plays rough, tough wars. And um, so we use him uh, on there. Jim does all his PR. So uh, we managed to, to, to put his image in there. And we actually have a video of the guy with no arm, too. But this guy is on the other side, hopefully is a positive influence. And that's the Cebito method. Okay. It's coming up with ways to defeat the character in the middle from doing the right thing because his buddy is doing the wrong thing and then learning the value of doing the right thing. That's pretty good on my, on my shoulder. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty simplified, right. Of the, of the process. And then, um, you know, and, and that's uh, from a, from a very high level, it's an excellent way to kind of reframe what it is that we do and, and, and how we need to do it. Do you have any tips and tricks or, or case studies where this has been applied, where you could kind of map this, the final story that was created to exactly what you've just shown? Do we have a half an hour or an hour together? Yeah, we're running out of time. Okay, so, so we've got about we got about ten minutes left. Oh, okay, okay. So I have a deck uh, that I put together. Um, we were brought into um, like me, I operate by the pirate method. Okay, and every lesson I give was going to have a little sub lesson too. And this is good for instructional designers. You're a pirate. Okay, you are basically the pirate ship captain would always put a gold doubloon on the nail to the mast for the next person who speaks, for the next sailor who found their next, you know, conquest. Similarly, in learning circumstances, the piracy, you're not trying to kill anybody, but you're, you're, you're trying to get more work for your client company or for yourself. After you've determined that they'll be open to that role, right? But most people like work. So I always heard um, when I hear something, I think to myself, oh, that might be an opportunity for learning for our case. In which case, I had a lab at um, called Level 4 at uh, Raytheon uh, with, I don't know, anywhere between 40 and 400 people, depending on the proposal we're putting out. And um, I was down... uh, giving a presentation at the um, at uh, their annual engineering conference. And um, this got me made because I they, they heard about, it was about virtual reality. And these two engineers came up to me in my hotel room, knocked on the door, it was like eight o'clock when everybody got back. Because these nerd people just talk about this engineering stuff all the time. So and it's great, it's, my dad was an engineer, that's all he would do at parties and my mom would drink martinis. So we, <laughs> They brought me out. Said, we got to show you this. So they brought me to the lobby and had an early version of Oculus, which was called the Rift, Oculus Rift Developer Kit, which we all had. But I hadn't applied this way. And they showed me 
some training they had been doing for the V-22 Osprey. Ah, okay, a government project. It's, it's a plane aimed by, owned by the Navy, uh, run by the uh, Marines. And um, so they said, well, you know, we uh, we have uh, an have to fix it, and uh, they're not happy with their current vendor. Ah, okay, a sales opportunity. So what happened was a $120 million training project to um, improve, improve the flight performance of the Osprey simply by listening by, by, and, and by being present and also by pushing people saying, we got to do this, we got to do this. So, um, and the plane went from 20%, dare I say this? I'm oh, sure we're not. 20% operational readiness to 90%. Hmm. Same ratio as the accident removal. And it, you didn't have to do anything after that because we, we focused on the why. Okay. And that's the big thing about, about the method you focus on why we're here not what we're here to do because that's that'll get you the arms along with the training materials when, so, you're, when you're telling these stories um how how do you decide how long the story needs to be like uh in order to get the correct Im amount of impact right like like you yes. might be able to just just very quickly you know relay the story of of this is hmm. how you do it this is why you should do it and this is how you shouldn't do it right but a good story, point great great question yeah yeah sometimes it can take a long time sometimes a story can be like a, a mini story like is well it does bring up the issue of micro learning which is a new uh field that i've been working with um exonify on helping perfect their algorithms and their and develop their their uh micro learning takes there's two parts to it that it, the first part everybody does, short, quick learning blurps. Blurps, I think they call them in a Monty Python or a British skit once. Second thing you got to do is have AI that you make too many vignettes that what you need because you're going to direct them down, branch them down different paths of these short little quick things. So um, so in our last one, we, uh, so yeah, there is, there is, it depends on the idiom that you're working in and things are changing big time in, in, uh, uh, learning. However, I'll answer your question another way too. Always ask yourself, is this a learning piece? Does this have a beginning and a middle and an end? Could it be solved in a job aid or, or you know, a, a work book or something or a, or index cards or whatever? But could it, be, does you have to go through the whole effort? And I spent a lot of my time talking people out of virtual reality and out of e-learning because in many ways, it doesn't work. It's being shoehorned into something that doesn't need it. Then you stretch it out to all these objectives. And so my thing is, um, is, is it a training piece would be the first question I'd ask. How long it is, same thing the obstetricians told us when uh, my wife was, was having a hard time giving birth to our daughter. We, uh, the, the, it was on Memorial Day, so the doctors wanted to get out of there, go play golf. So, so that's like the only day they get. So they were like, "Oh, we need to do a, a C-section." We need. To, I'm like, "Wait, wait a minute." The turn to the OB. Do we need to do a C-section? That's six months of agony for my wife. He said, "No, we're going to let the baby tell us how long it's going to take, and if we need to, we will, not to the very last minute." And that's the same with with the learning piece. You have a, um, a the, the 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 content itself will tell you what to do. And that's why it's important to do those things that on that list that you gave and that great condensation on the uh, Sabido, how to put together uh, a Sabido style drama. Um, this, this kind of goes into the details of, yep. of the and we'll, and we'll the share that with everybody in the blog afterwards. I, I can, I can sense people typing in, Hey, can we get a copy of that? Right, right off the bat, Chris, what's this making you think all about? Oh my goodness. Oh, I mean, so many, it touches so many things that we all, we've talked so many times here on idiotic about, uh, you know, that struggle where someone comes to you and says, we need a course for this. And often our role really is to say, well, no, do we need a course or do we, you, you have a problem that needs to be solved, but is the course, the thing that's going to be the, the way to do it. And this opens us up to a whole, a whole other range of things to, to offer to people as, as options. Um, and and I also very very much value the fact that um, it, you know there's there's evidence the the stats etc that you you talked about about change etc um, earlier in our time here today um, those are pretty convincing numbers for sure yeah without without a doubt and it, it is I think the 
like I mentioned at the beginning, like just the, the idea of blending and the idea of having so many different types of learning content that can be created that we can do to tell these stories, right? We don't, we don't have to, uh, you know, I suppose in, in a certain extent, you could tell a story in a job aid, like a, a job aid in and of itself could have elements of a little story in it too, right? The VA does that. We got them to do that. Because they, they just need an activity guide. They didn't need a whole turn mm -hmm. learning. But um, the other thing, too, is that um, that I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. I had another thought that was relevant to that. Sorry. But I've talked about so much. I, I, I appreciate everybody listening. Yeah, no, no, that's all right. Yeah, and so I think just as we, uh, as we just kind of wrap up our time here today, um, just kind of summarizing the whole thing right i mean there's a lot to it storytelling is not is a a, a many faceted oh. solution to the learning that we do oh it came to you um there is a way it's a term we used to call you always have a client in the room saying well we've forgotten about our our ex our plan nine from outer space feature that we need to include in our thing and i in the training and the learning must have that and Inevitably, this is the vice president or something is totally out of it. So you you have to be there. And there are VPs that are they're not out of it. I'm just saying this is a personality type that comes in. It's called a horn. They come in and they want to take over the meeting. So they wait and wait. You decide everything. Then they disrupt it. Well, what we, we had a strategy I learned from an old timer in Detroit, uh, Richard Markowitz. He said, uh, uh, just put it in the print. So <laughs> put it in the print. <laughs> You're nodding, Chris. You and. Yeah, um, put it just put it in the print. Tell us, tell us what yeah. we're we're getting kind of tight on the time. Where so we know some folks are are wanting more. Is there a very specific book that describes how to go further with the Sabido method? I mean, like I said, we're going to post some of the stuff that you're going to send to me, the documents that explains it a little bit deeper. Like what what do we do next after you know those the three characters and whatnot. Uh, obviously we don't have enough time to walk everybody through it, uh, you know, uh, but we just kind of wanted to introduce it to everybody. So how, what can people do next? Well, if they have a year to wait, I'm, uh, I'm working on a text called, uh, uh learning that sticks for, it's a Houghton Mifflin, uh, deal, uh, part of a, a package of disruptive mm -hmm. texts. And, uh, but in the meantime, um, I can put together, uh, some of my other materials, specific to certain courses that I've been, I can't let out the TSCI stuff. That's they'll come and shoot me, but they'll, and my family, but they'll uh, <laughs> no, they'll, but I can, I've got plenty of stuff that I can put together that describes that. It's really just good dramaturgy. I mean, really it's, it's, I've done it so long that I just take so many things for granted that I realized I had to write it down. You know, and, and I, I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I, I think that's what people are kind of craving in the chat too. I mean, it's okay. like, it's, it's not second nature to a lot of folks in the field that we, uh, you know, they're, well, they're I would working, say, right. And so I, would say, I think everybody's learning and kind of needs their hand held a little bit. Read some of the books that I flashed in front of you. Uh, any literature you really like that inspires you. Also, there's a book called the art of dramatic writing by Lejos Egri. Everyone kind of knows about that one. And then, um, a couple of other texts that will give you some more details, but really it's crafting good theater that uh oh we we lost you there for a second, Jim, but I think that's probably a it's our it's our cue from the the video gods that it's <laughs> it's time for <laughs> <laughs> to, to go. Deus, ex, Deus ex machina <laughs> coming down and telling us what the solving our problems <laughs> <laughs> as always everybody thanks so much for the great chat Jim thanks so much for this session we really appreciated uh, you here uh, and sharing that building on the um, really exciting and it's a really cool thing to, to wrap your brain around and start thinking about doing gang um, as always folks we do need to mention that uh, instructional designers in offices drinking coffee hashtag idiotic is brought to you by domino learning systems there is a great green button down at the uh, bottom of your current screen if you're listening to us on uh, on the audio podcast version of this session domino.com that's d-o-m I-N-K-N-O-W.com um, to learn more if that's a, something that, uh, that could be of interest to you. Thanks so much, Absolutely. gang. 
Let's yep, dance thanks on. to the chat. Thanks, dance James, for out. hanging out with us. We have uh, we have some fantastic guests lined up for the remainder of the month, and then we'll be rolling into April as well. So um, if you're new, also I wanted to give a quick shout out to you and your managers. Invite your managers to hang out with us. Those people you yeah. work with. Right? Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Thanks again, James. You're awesome. Appreciate it.